Today, I have the pleasure of introducing you to one of my favorite plants and a plant that is widely known in herbalism, Urtica dioica, also known as nettle or stinging nettle. If I had to choose just 10 plants to include in my herbal medicine making, as well as in my general diet, stinging nettle would definitely make that list. It is a highly nutritious plant that has a wide, wide range of medicinal uses that we will discuss today. So we are going to go into detail about the medicinal uses of stinging nettle. And once I've convinced you that this is a plant that you want to include in your herbal medicine, we will look at how to identify it, where to find it, and then of course, how to harvest this plant safely so that you don't get stung. And then I'll share a few tips on how to grow stinging nettle in containers so that you can always have it on hand in your own medicine garden. Stinging nettles are a popular springtime food for many cultures around the world. According to my husband's Tolkien cookbook, even hobbits enjoyed nettle. It's a nutrient-rich plant that does well in a variety of recipes from pesto and sauerkraut to soups and chips. The young tender nettles are most commonly harvested for eating and are used as a springtime tonic to flush toxins from the body and restore vitamins and minerals depleted due to a poor winter diet. It can also be used to improve overall gut health. Looking at the nutritional facts, you will find that nettle is low in fat and sodium. 100 grams contains 8% of your daily value of potassium and 24% of your daily dietary fiber. The highest quantity of protein can be found in the leaves and seeds, and the stems and root contain the highest concentration of calcium, iron, and magnesium. Now let's talk about some specific medicinal uses backed by research. Firstly, stinging nettle is an antioxidant. Stinging nettles are high in phenolic compounds, which are antioxidant compounds that help with problems like cell degeneration, inflammation, and aging. In fact, the same amount of nettles contains approximately twice the amount of phenolic compounds when compared to cranberry juice. Next, stinging nettle is also great for cancer prevention and men's health. Nettle root extract has been found in a 2000 study to have an anti-proliferative effect meaning that it contains compounds that inhibit the overgrowth of cells leading to the development of specifically prostate cancer. Nettles are also anti-inflammatory. A 1999 study identified certain compounds in stinging nettle that can short-circuit flare-ups in certain autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. Some even apply nettles topically and purposefully sting themselves in areas where they're experiencing pain to provide temporary relief. Ironically, despite nettle hairs containing histamines, nettle can also be used as an antihistamine. As you can see, in addition to being a very nutritious food, stinging nettle has a wide range of potential uses. Now let's discuss how to identify stinging nettle and where to find it. Stinging nettle can easily be identified by recognizing a handful of features. First, you will notice that the leaves are somewhat cordate or heart-shaped with a wide base that gathers at the stem and narrow to a point at the end of the leaf. You will also notice that the leaves are serrated. Heart-shaped serrated leaves are quite common among many plants, so you'll want to look for other features as well. In stinging nettle, the leaves grow in sets of two, alternating in direction with each set of leaves. In this picture, looking at the nettle from a top-down view, you can see the first set growing east to west and the other set growing north to south. Though it would probably be difficult to tell by touching it, stinging nettle also has a square stem, but perhaps the easiest way to identify this plant is by its characteristic sting. On the mature leaves and stem of the plant, you will find tiny white hairs that contain formic acid, the same chemical used by ants and bees, and histamines, which will sting and result in itching pain for hours wherever it comes into contact with the skin. It can be quite the shock to stumble into a patch of this, which can grow up to six feet tall in the right conditions. You may be tempted to avoid this plant altogether, but if you're brave enough, you can learn to love and work with nettle and be rewarded with her wide range of healing properties. So where does nettle grow and where can you look for it? 
Many varieties of nettles can be found all around the world, from Scandinavian countries to India and in North and South America. It prefers moist, fertile soils and sunny areas, and is most commonly found along sunny riverbeds. You can also grow it easily in containers from seeds or root divisions. I've done both. It really likes a green mulch twice a year and consistent watering. Now let's talk about how to safely harvest nettles so that you don't get stung. First, you will want a pair of gloves. You can use rubber gloves or gardening gloves. Some people say that the acids and the stinging part of the nettle eat through rubber gloves. So far, I've not observed this, but it's something I thought I'd mention just in case there's some truth to this claim. You will also want a pair of garden shears or scissors. I like these hardware scissors as they can handle the, the fibrous stalks of nettle with ease. And finally, you'll want a container to collect your nettle in. I'm using this wash basin so I don't have to transfer the nettle from one container to another when processing. Nettles for eating should be harvested when young as these nettles usually have the lowest concentration of oxalates. Typically, only the top four to six leaves are harvested, called nettle tops. These nettles that I'm harvesting now are not quite mature and have nice large leaves that will do great for drying to make nettle tea. I cut the stalk down to three inches above the soil so that it might have a chance to grow back this season and give more fresh young nettle tops. Cutting the plants before they flower will also help you to prevent the spread of nettles in areas of your yard where you don't want it. Once finished harvesting, I rinse the leaves of any insects, dirt, and debris, usually using a pair of tongs to agitate the water. I change the water twice during this process. Last, I separate the leaves from the stems. Nettle can be dried for teas, used in tinctures, or saved fresh or frozen for cooking. My favorite way to use it is in sauerkraut. Some preparations will make better use of the anti-allergen and anti-cancer compounds, while other preparations will offer the greatest concentration of vitamins and minerals. I will cover this topic in more detail in a future video, so make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell notification so that you can be notified when I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon.